Hey, thanks for tuning in. We're back in the garage for another DIY project and this time it's solar. I finally have all of the parts that I need, I think, to start this install. And uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to this and just kind of gathering parts over the last few months and I finally have the time to start tackling it. So I'm hoping to get the solar done um, this weekend if possible, if I have everything that I need. And uh, yeah, beyond to bigger and better things like a diesel heater, that'll be the next thing. Um, this solar project's gonna happen kind of in a few parts. Uh, you know, first we're gonna be mounting up the panel onto the roof of the truck. And then we have to build um, kind of like a little area in the back of the truck for uh, the DC-DC charger, for the house battery, and kind of all the circuits to run into. Uh, we got to mount the house battery in the truck and yeah so i think that's really about it but i'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it so jumping into the gear i've got my solar panel here this is a sunflare explorer 105 watt flexible solar panel now this is really cool because it's got the connectors on the underside of the panel so i'm gonna basically double side tape this whole thing onto the roof and it will seal it up nicely up there no exposed cables and then got some tools over here have a crimper and a wire cutter so we've got six gauge wire this is going to go from the battery to the dc dc charger now this dc dc charger is going to run to the house battery that way the trucks alternator and everything can charge the house battery properly at correct voltage and charge rates from the solar panel, we have our little Renogy Wanderer um, solar charge controller here. This will also run to the battery. Um, from the battery to, or from the solar panel to the uh, solar controller will be some 14 gauge wire. I've got all sorts of lugs here for various different sizes. Got a nice like 10 pack of fuses here. Um, and some miscellaneous breakers that I may or may not use. These are all 30 amp breakers. And then I also have some 10 gauge here that I might or might not use yet. So I think I pretty much have everything that I need here. Um, from the house battery, that's where we'll run and wire up a Blue Sea Systems fuse block to attach other things too. But this should get me pretty much where I need to go for installing the solar part of this project and the house battery. So I brought the panel here into my office so I could lay it down and uh, clean it off and then get the double-sided tape on it and make sure it's nice and on there good and that there are no bubbles. Now I'm doing my best not to stretch it either. All right, so we got it all taped up, got a nice strip across the middle, and then around the cables. So the next thing we got to do is figure out where to drill that hole. The panel's going to go up here in this back driver side corner, and the wires are going to be somewhere around here. So what we'll do is lay the panel up here and then measure basically where that hole's gonna go and uh, drill a hole in the roof. A little nervous about this part. So the panel's up here and loosely measured out. So we're gonna go an inch and a half from the side and five inches from the back here. This gives me room to do another crossbar in the future if I want and not be shading the panel. But yeah, now we just have to drill the hole up here in the front. Drill the hole right in there where the wires are gonna go through into the inside. So that's what we're gonna do now.
Got a nice little hole drilled in there. You saw me stop there for a second. I was checking to make sure the air mattress was far enough away in there so I didn't drill into it. I actually snuck a piece of wood in there. That way I had some protection there, but holes drilled. We'll get this cleaned up. I'm just putting silicone around this as well to make sure it's going to have a watertight seal. Alright. Mounted. So you can see it up there all mounted. That's about all I have the time for tonight. So I'm going to let it that silicone dry and it stay warm in here overnight so the adhesive on the tape sticks and we'll pick it up in the morning. So it's the next morning. I have the edges here masked off. What we're going to do is lay some silicone around the edge. Make sure this is water sealed. This is what I'm going to be using. It says it dries ultra clear and shouldn't yellow, so we'll see about that. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and get that all done. Okay, so now that the panel is in, before we can hook up the solar charge controller or anything, we have to find a home for our battery. So I took out the interior storage and we're going to basically build, build this in a little bit more in here and strengthen it up and build a spot for this Renogy 100 amp hour battery to sit that I have here. It's a pretty heavy thing so we're gonna have to beef this up a little bit and then once we get that built we can then uh, put this back in the truck and get the battery in there. Update, got the battery in so I did a lot of kind of test fitting pulling it uh, in and out of the truck there and it fits in here perfectly and even though this um, opening here isn't wide enough to fit the battery in like this I do have enough room once it's in the truck to pick it up and twist it and then slide it out super tight fit so I had to test fit quite a few times and you can see got it all wedged in there and then I went ahead and installed the DC DC charger here as well um, so that fits in there perfectly and I can still get the battery in and out of this spot. So I'm going to start getting that wired up here. And to hold the battery down, I have this. So basically a little metal bracket here and it'll bolt down right there. And then I'll put a, a bolt up here at the top as well. So that'll keep that nice and sturdy. So been hard at work here, got the battery, everything's all sorted here, that's how it mounts in. I gotta still drill a hole all the way through up there for a real bolt, but that's a really sturdy uh, screw anyways. But we got the bolt down here, that holds everything in all nicely, and then moved over the DC-DC charger because I didn't have enough room to fit in this fuse. So we have six gauge wire running up to a 30 amp fuse. And that'll run up here to the batteries positive and then six gauge negative to the batteries negative. So this box is ready to go back in the truck now. And the reason I had to get all of this sorted out is because you can't hook the solar up to the charge controller first. The battery has to be hooked to the charge controller first and then the panel can be hooked to the charge controller. So I had to get the battery all sorted out. But now I think we're ready to put this box 
back into the truck. So that's what we're going to do. So popping up into the tent, this is how it comes through the roof. So two leads come through, got wired into here. I've got my 10 amp fuse right there. And I've got a little slack in this because I'm going to zip tie the cable up to that little cable tie to make sure this has some relief so it's not pulled tight. Then it runs all the way down here. Nice and tucked. Nice and tucked away too. It's out of the way. And then getting down here, you can see I actually ran it behind this little plastic um, deal here. So it's in the channel and out of the way, this will be well underneath the mattress. I'll scoop back, and then it's gonna pop out here. Oops, I heard that. Pop out here, and drop down through that hole into the bed. So what we're gonna do is cut this cable a little bit long and run it down there, and the solar charge controller will be just on the other side of that hole. So ran the cables down, and then the solar charge controller is going to go probably somewhere around there. And I just did command strips on it because, A, this is just a singular panel, so I can't drill through this slot. Um, and B, this allows me to take it off and move it around if I need to. Um, so, you know, the position of the future could change or something. But, yeah, I think it's probably going to go right about there. And then this will plug into this, and then leads will run down from this into the box here over to the battery. All right, we got the solar charge controller in. See, it's all mounted up here. Toggle through the menus. See the, whoops. See the battery has a full charge. Cables are all ran, that drops down into the box. Still have to still have to tidy up the wire in here and put it where it needs to be, but it's hooked up for the time being. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked with how everything came out. You can see how the wire comes through there into the charge controller. It's dark out now, but uh, Come back out here tomorrow, pull this out in the sun, and put some load on the battery and make sure this thing's working. So it's the next day, and it's not sunny out right now. It's snowing and overcast, but before I pull the truck out of the garage, we have to finish kind of the last phase of this. So last night I got the uh, solar charge controller in and the battery and that stuff all wired up. And so solar is connected to the house battery now, so it can be charged that way. But the last portion is to hook up the DC-DC charger, which you saw me put in the box as well. Luckily, when I made my uh, kind of 12-volt panel in the bed prior, uh, I'll stick a link to that video up here, um, I ran 8-gauge all the way from the front of the truck to the bed of the truck and had it um, grounded to the battery as well. The good news is that I don't need to run new wire from the front of the truck to the back of the truck for this DC-DC charger. Since it's only a 20 amp charger, I can actually use that 8 gauge because uh, that's actually listed here in the manual as being um, good for a distance of 11 to 20 feet. So the run from where it is under the hood to the back is maybe eight or nine feet, so it should be plenty good there. So what I'm gonna do is take that cable that's already ran, we'll shorten it up a little bit and we'll hook it to the DC-DC charger, and then I have some 10 gauge that can run from the house battery back to that 12 volt panel where my fridge plugs in. So it saves me a ton of work of having to run and route, route those wires because it's already in there. So we're gonna go ahead and work on that. You'll have to excuse the mess back here, but as you can see with this 8 gauge that I already ran back here, see it already came all the way back to that corner. So I hooked it from there and now we're just pulling it back and it's going to string from here and go up into there, come all the way over to this side. So I actually might not need to shorten this really if at all to utilize it, which will be great. 
So I pulled the truck outside, it's a sunny day. We can see the panels generating at 19 volts and about 1.5 amps or so. So it is working. You can see the battery there is at 14.4. Super pumped on that. The voltage it's generating is a bit higher than what the panel said. Uh, the specs of the panel rated it. It's like 16 and a half volts max. So curious about that, but uh, yeah, I'm just happy that it's all working. Got this also all wired up last night, so that's putting back into place and the wires are routed. Everything is in here. You can see I added the second fuse down here for that back panel for my fridge. Now I just need to clean up the wiring and make it look a little bit more organized. Everything's just loosely strung in here. Also, I got the, the D plus cable routed, found a spot for that. I'll show you guys. So you can see the green lights on means the DC DC charger is working and charging the battery. So yeah, pretty pumped on this. Just got to get it all cleaned up. So I spent some time looking under the hood to try and find a 12 volt source that was only turned on when the key was on. Uh, Unfortunately, it looks like everything is hot all the time under there. So I had to route that D plus cable into the inside here and it's plugged into basically uh, the ignition fuse. Um, so this is a little add a circuit. So just takes that and doesn't pull any power. Just this is what tells the inverter that the car is running, which means the alternator is on and it can use the inverter to charge the battery. This helps keep the inverter from draining your starter battery when the truck isn't on. So I got it all tidied up in here and the wires are all nicely routed. Everything is looking good. Got the other wires kind of tucked up under here. It's my air compressor in there so still quite a bit of room in here for other stuff. Batteries all mounted. I'll go over to the other side here. So you can see my fuses down here. So this first one is basically fusing from the output of the DC-DC charger to the battery. And this one here is fusing uh, the output from the battery to my panel over there behind the fridge that controls the fridge and the lights in here. Everything's all nice and neat. super happy. So that's a wrap on the solar install and second battery in the Tacoma. I'm super stoked with how everything turned out and just how it all came together. Uh, the fitment of the battery in that front box uh, wasn't necessarily planned for. I knew the battery is probably going to go up there, but it fit so well in the position that it ended up in. So stoked on that. Um, I had been sitting on that solar panel for an embarrassingly long amount of time. So Really happy to finally get that on and I had picked that battery up during Black Friday. There was a really good deal on it and I just couldn't pass it up and I'm happy I did pick it up because they're on back order now. But yeah, this was kind of really the next uh, piece that I needed to get done in the build out of the back of the Tacoma because I wanted to also add in a diesel heater and I knew I was going to need more power for that and that the single battery that I have now just wasn't going to fulfill the needs of the fridge and the diesel heater. Now that I've got solar, I don't have to worry about being parked in one spot for more than a day. And the truck is just now better set up for longer duration trips or higher power needs. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Um, I'll stick uh, links in the description for all the parts that I ordered. I got everything off of Amazon except for the um, solar panel. And uh, yeah, drop a comment if I didn't cover something or if you guys have any questions, I'll be sure to get around to those. And definitely subscribe if you haven't. There'll certainly be more videos to come, like I mentioned, diesel heater install. Hopefully get some time to do that here soon. But until then, uh, yeah, subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.